Welcome to uh, St. Goma's uh, Working From Home, Working From Remote uh, series. Uh, this section, uh, we're going to look at the user control panel. So what is the user control panel? User control panel is the ability to configure features and use functionality without a physical phone. So many times uh, you might not have your actual physical extension uh, and you would normally, while you might have the ability to access your voicemail, you might use those through v BLF keys. The user control panel allows you to access a lot of different functions that you normally would have used your BLF keys uh, to access previously, but because you don't have your phone, you can access those same functions via the web. So when you're working remote, you might not have your actual phone, you might be using the Zulu client, so you don't have access to those BLF keys. User control panel is really useful in uh, helping those users get access to those functions. There's two parts to the UCP. First is the administration section, uh, walk you through what it looks like from an administration section. Uh, and then there's the user conf configuration standpoint. We'll walk through both of those in this uh, little section of the UCP. Uh, so from an administration standpoint, UCP access is controlled by the firewall within the PBX. Uh, you're going to need to set that up and you're going to need to be able to provide that connection information to the users. UCP functionality is controlled via user management. Uh, for complete information on the user management module, I've given the link here. Basically, what is going to happen is that from an administrator perspective, you're going to add widgets access for each of those users. It is easier to provide that access using groups as opposed to uh, individual extensions. So for instance, let's say I have a group of remote users. I could create a group called remote users and put a bunch of different extensions. Uh, if those users are no longer remote, then I could take them out of the remote user group and change their permissions at a group level as opposed to an extension level. If your users are not familiar with the UCP, they're not familiar with it, uh, when you first set up the UCP, make sure that you enable tutorials. And then once you've done all that setup, you have to provide the information to the users when they log in for the first time. If you've enabled tutorials, uh, they'll be able to um, walk through the tutorial that the system gives. So the next section here is how to actually set up your um, whoops, how to set up your uh, firewall so that the users can actually get access to the UCP. So what we're going to do now is look at what some of the settings are needed from a firewall perspective for your PBX to enable your users to connect to the user control panel, right? So you first you know, have to uh, enable certain ports that the UCP uses, and then you'll be able to provide that connection uh, information to your users, right? So um, for additional information on uh, setting up firewall and UCP as a service, uh, we have a, a link here. Uh, and then of course, there's certain ports that you're going to need to open. I am going to show you where in the uh, PBX that you would want to set those. So I'm going to switch over. I'm going to log into my PBX and walk you through where you might find that information. All right, first thing I'm going to do is log in. First place that I'm going to want to set access to my UCP is in my firewall settings. So I go to modules and then I go to firewall and then I go to services. Now, probably have different zones set up for your firewall you know this could be very complex it could be very simple uh, maybe you have an internet hanging uh, PBX maybe they have to VPN into your network before they can reach the PBX you know these are all things that you would have set up as an administrator but once the once of the key things that you have to do is that you have to enable the core service of UCP and assign it to a zone right so I'm setting here, I'm setting up UCP to be accessible from the internet. I can also set it up to different other zones 
uh, and add zones as I want. I'm not going to walk you through how to set up different zones in your firewall, uh, but this is where you would want to make sure that you first have uh, the UCP uh, access. If you want to add uh, different functions, uh, like for instance, being able to use the phone function from UCP, uh, you'll also make sure that you want to create WebRTC access as well, which is also in the services, and then you would have to sign that to uh, a different zone or the proper zones. Once you've set it up in your firewall, you want to make sure that your ports are set up. And so that's in System Admin. So you click on System Admin and you go to Port Management. And this is where you're going to set up the ports that you want to use for UCP. So by default, UCP uses port 81. And if you do have a certificate and you're doing HTTP, HTTPS, uh, by default, it uses port uh, 4,443, right? Which is, you know, a standard uh, usage of uh, 443 for your ports, right? So you have all these options. If you don't have a certificate, the HTTPS options are not going to be available to you. Um, but then once you get to this point, then you would provide the connection information to your user. So for instance, my PBX is on an IP of... 10.20.41.130, you know, it's a local lab kind of environment that I have. And if I wanted to give the URL for users to access the UCP, I would say hit port 81. Now, at this point, um, the users will be able to access the user control panel and do configuration. Uh, but first, you need to do the configuration necessary to define which widgets that they'll actually be able to access. So I'm going to show you uh, how to actually access those widgets and, and add those widgets to the UCP that your users might see. So now we're going to look at how to actually set up the UCP access at the user level. So I'm going to log into my uh, PBX here. So again, UCP access uh, functionality for the widgets is in the user management module. Uh, as I previously mentioned, uh, you'll want to use groups. Uh, it's easier to work at the group level as opposed to uh, individually configuring UCP access and functionality on a per extension basis. So <clears throat> I have a group here called remote users that I've created and I'm going to click on the remote users and I have five users that I've decided out of my extensions that are in this remote user group and I'm going to once I've edited the group I want to give them access to UCP so I click on the UCP, UCP tab uh, this is an important thing if they are not familiar with it I mentioned it before make sure that you enable the tour mode that will walk them through when the first time that they log in. Uh, and then from there, every tab that you see effectively, effectively uh, equates to a widget that they'll be able to add. So perhaps we want to add the users to have the ability to access their voicemail from the user control panel. I would make sure that I have voicemail set to yes. Maybe I want them to be able to set find me and follow me, I can set that to yes. Perhaps I want them to be able to look at their call history uh, so that they can be able to set up, maybe they want to, I want them to be able to set up conferences that are associated with their uh, extensions. These are all things that you could do in the user control panel, right? But you do have to give them the access first, as, as, as well as maybe not give them access to a widget that they don't necessarily need. So, Property management might be a widget, but if you don't work in the hotel industry, maybe you don't need to have that widget as an option that your users can add. So these within your UCP for your group are the things that you want to be able to give them access to. Make sure that you set up your tour mode. And then when you're done setting up what widgets that you want your users to uh, be able to access, hit your submit and they apply the configuration. In the next section, 
we're going to look at it what from a user perspective. Like, what does it look like? What does the user control panel look like? when I log into it as a user and what, how do I add widgets, right? So this is how do you actually set up so that the users can actually access those widgets. The next section is going to be, how do we actually add those widgets and make, uh, and, and use the UCP. So now let's look at the UCP from a user configuration standpoint. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the, the uh, information that your administrator provides you on how to connect to the UCP uh, and then you're going to log in using your credentials and you're going to add the various widgets. Now I have a system set up where I have a brand new extension that is just logging into the uh, control panel for the first time. So I'm going to bring that up, log in, now it's going to welcome me uh, and indicate that um, I first time I've ever logged in so I'm going to start my tour and the tour is actually pretty self-explanatory. You're going, it's walk you through what the concepts of adding the dashboard are, um, explain to you how to add widgets. Uh, I'm going to skip some of that, but like when you're doing it for your first time, uh, you're definitely going to want to do that. So I will say this, your first thing you want to uh, add is a dashboard. My first dashboard I'm going to call main, and I'm gonna, then I'll create the dashboard. And I will have widgets in my dashboard. I don't actually have uh, any widgets added yet, but I can always delete the dashboard. I can always add dashboards. So these are all things you can do. So I'm going to end the actual tour and just walk you through just the concept of, of adding a widget. So if I click on the plus sign to add a widget, I'll see all the various widgets that I have been given access to. Uh, so like I was saying, uh, it's very useful. So for instance, maybe I will add voicemail uh, for my extension. And if I were to get voicemail uh, for this extension, they would show up here in the system. Uh, perhaps I wanted to add my follow me. I could add follow me to my dashboard. Uh, I currently have it disabled, but I can make settings. Uh, changes to my extension uh, in the, this particular instance I might be able to set my call forwarding I'll add that to my dashboard so I can just at one click uh, change my call forwarding settings and maybe I want to add my call history so this would be an illustration of all the calls that I've had. Uh, this particular extension hasn't made any calls. But you can see that you have a, a variety of different things that you could do. You could change your password. Uh, you could set up different uh, settings for your details. Um, you, all the things that you normally would have done, uh, you could do those things as, as well here. So I'm going to, at this point, uh, I'm not going to change any of my user settings. Uh, I'm not going to add any more widgets, but I have a lot of different widgets that I would be able to add. I just continue to click click on the the uh, plus sign, and then I would add say. I will say that if I wanted to add another uh, dashboard, let's say for instance I was in a queue, and I wanted to just keep that away from my main dashboard, so I could go to my queue pack, uh, dashboard and add the information about Q wallboard. All right. So I don't actually have that this particular extension set up in that queue, uh, but you could see how you'd be able to flip between looking at a queue and looking at your main dashboard. So that's really the user interface into UCP. Uh, like I said, you're going to want to use get the information as to how to connect to your UCP uh, from your administrator. And then once you're there, then you'll be able to add the widgets that you need. 
So that completes our user and session on how to use UCP. Uh, hopefully you'll look at more of the Sangoma work from home series that we've uh, provided for you folks. And uh, good luck. Thanks. <laughs>